What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here with the always dapper Thad Williams. We are covered in rain yeah, here in Los Angeles. It's wet. It's, it's it is wet. wet here. First thing you learn if you ever move to Los Angeles is this city is not equipped for rain. Well, really any weather in general. We're not built. We're not built for it. We're not. Uh, they've closed freeways. The whole city and roads. is a back lot. It really the entire is. city, all the all the all the walls just kind of fall down. Right. Like down. an old Charlie Chaplin movie. Every roof and every building leaks. It doesn't matter where you live. It's always yeah. leaking. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we have a fully packed show here today. We're going to go over the Golden Globe nominations, uh, the cancellation there of Daredevil, which we called, uh, you know, Narcos Mexico, renew- all this kind of fun yeah, stuff. Lots um, of big, lots of big news this week. I'm glad to be back on the show. I yeah, missed, we missed you. Last I missed. Week, buddy. I missed last week. I got pulled into a very uh, pressing matter, yeah. unfortunately. But uh, I heard uh, Sinead was here. Which She's the best. I, I'm. I can't wait to actually do a show with her, which will happen. Next week. Fantastic. Yeah, we're going to do, I mean, before we get into it, I'd like to wish you a very happy, marvelous season. Uh, Same to you. Yeah, thank you. How many Uh, episodes in are you? Two and a half. We had friends over last Uh, night. I finished, I I watched three last night. Okay. Yeah, Uh, it's great. Somebody spoiled something for me on Twitter, which is the worst. Don't do that, people. Who spoiled... I don't remember. I'm not going to say it. Yeah. I I I like scrolled by it so quickly. It's like last night when I, I... Open up Instagram midway through Jeopardy, and they spoiled the they spoiled who won Dave the episode. Leffler from Pittsburgh, uh, who's crushing it right a now. A legend. He isn't. He's going to be in an All Stars season. Have you put in your All Star lineup? By the way, I'm going to do it today. I, Have I, you done it? I set I set up it, the, for the Jeopardy All Stars. Yes, you can go to Jeopardy's website and pick one captain and two players, mm-hmm. and you get for when every. When is the deadline? Do you the know? Dead, it said that you can you can continue to. Uh, uh, mm. Tweak your lineup okay. through the end of December. Okay, all right. Uh, so, which means I assume they're taping the episodes in <laughs> January, yeah, and then they're going to run them in in during the sweeps, right? Uh, but you, for every correct answer mm. that a, any of your three players makes, you get one entry into the sweepstakes. I love and, that, and it's like where that cruise line and goes, then, and then you win a cruise. Like the winner gets a cruise. So the more, Genius. the better your lineup is. The more right. entries you have, the more chance you have to win. And if you guys have been uh, following me on Twitter or Instagram, I've been documenting Dave's run here these three straight oh, nights. Oh, yeah. It did spoil me last night, but I was really psyched that Dave has won three straight. Now, hopefully, because this airs tomorrow, our TV talk airs tomorrow, that Dave has won four straight. I would hope so. Going into a Friday. Uh, if you guys don't know what a Pittsburgh accent sounds like, Dave has a pretty decent one. It's not very thick, but certain words. Well, he's got that big old mustache to talk mustache. out of that mustache. The best was the... the gnocchi, when he tried to say gnocchi. <laughs> he, he, butch, he butchered the word N- gnocchi. Gnocchi. But what I loved, he's a former police officer, yes. a retired police officer, and in his first interview, mm-hmm. he's talking about his mustache, and then he's like, yeah, and then when I was undercover for a little while, I had a long beard. Yeah. And I was like, uh, follow-up question <laughs> about your undercover work. What were you doing? Because I really have a lot of questions. Yeah. And so on the next night, then Alex actually asked a follow-up about his undercover work, and then he told a story about Pretty cool. walking it, like his, yeah. no one recognizing him with his big old beard. I love... Um, I. There aren't I just want to know shows. what he was doing undercover in I know. Pittsburgh. There aren't enough shows about undercover police work. There really isn't. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not talking about scripted shows. I'm talking about unscripted, oh, yeah. real life undercover real life, stories. Could, because we actually have a story. Uh, we'll jump ahead, right? Yeah, yeah, real, real quick and just knock it out. Um, New York Undercover, which yeah. was a show in the late '90s. Uh-huh. Uh, Dick Wolf produced it. It was on uh, Fox, I believe. Yeah. Uh, starred Malik Yoba from Cool Runnings. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And later Alphas, uh, the sci-fi show Alphas. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and Michael DiLorenzo. They're getting a reboot. Uh-huh. Uh, this was, it was the, f- it's going to be on ABC. It's going to be show run by the guy that created Hand of God. Uh, Ron Perlman. W- the Ron Perlman show on Amazon. I watched the first season. I, I watched I, liked it. I watched all of season one. Okay. It didn't, End in a way that I really liked. I was just, I was, it was right after Sons of Anarchy, and I was, that's true. S- and I was very into Ron Perlman, and like I yes. thought he, the ending for Ron Perlman was not the best. Correct. And I wanted a little more from Ron Perlman in that show. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So they're gonna redo this. Ben Watkins is gonna gonna run the show. Okay. Uh, for ABC, it was the first drama or the first cop drama uh, with uh, with. A two leads of color. Okay. Uh, on network TV, and uh, the uh, apparently later in the original series for the fourth season, uh, a, a new cast entered in, and kind of like all of Dick Wolf's shows, right? Uh, they just kind of started rotating cast members. Dick um, Wolf is like the general manager of a crappy football team. Sometimes <laughs> he's like every couple of years, like we need a new head coach. We gotta, we gotta switch it up, guys. Yes, yeah, yeah. switch it up. All right. Well, I mean, I don't, so, I mean, it's so, a, so it's there's a procedural. Your so there's it's, my, a, yeah. it's a procedural. I can't remember. 
I remember seeing it some in uh, reruns. I can't remember how uh, how serialized it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably not very because it was the mid mid to late nineties. But uh, I would think that the reboot would probably try to cover Go one. Little, what was that J Lo show? One long uh, undercover series, Shades of Blue. Shades of Blue. Shades of Blue with J Lo and Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. When he's not doing uh, cigarette smoking commercials, <laughs> he's on Shades of Blue, which just wrapped up actually. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, um, yeah. So this that's morning. Cool. Okay. Wait. Real quick. Before real quick. we go into it. Uh, you guys can follow this channel, Collider Podcast. You subscribe can. to it. Also, there is a Collider TV Talk feed on all of your podcasting networks. Subscribe to that. Tell your friends. Share it. Rate. Give us five stars. Uh, because if you don't know where it is or something like that, we've had discussions that it's kind of hard to find some of the Collider podcasts. Collider TV Talk has its own feed. Uh, so you guys can subscribe there. You can listen to us whenever. And, uh, you know, we're just kind of building the show here. It's Collider TV Talk 2.0. So, you know, trying to bring in more guests, yada, yada, yada. The more you guys listen, the more you guys click on things, the better guests and stuff we can have. Uh, maybe we'll get Dave Leffler one of these days. Yeah. Or, or an Alex Trebek. Who knows? Um, I would I would take either. Yes. I have uh, lots of questions for both of them. But real, before... Before we go, if you want to hear what a Pittsburgh accent sounds like, just hear him say the word thousand when he goes. Oh. Just wait for him to say thousand, I will... and you'll hear a Pittsburgh accent. Okay. It's pretty I'll, good. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my ear tuned to that. And fingers crossed for Dave Leffler on Thursday night and Friday night if he makes it that far. Yeah. Great guy from Pittsburgh. All right, let's get into it. Uh, we got Golden Globe nominations. Yeah, they showed. They came in at 5 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, I didn't see them until 6:30 when I woke up. Okay. But but they did. They did come in. Yep. Uh, some surprises. The Globes are always hard to predict. Oh, yeah. Because the Hollywood Foreign Press, they like they like that new, mm-hmm. like that new stuff. Yeah. Uh, the new car smell on a lot of their shows. I mean, Lena Dunham won for Girls. Lena, Lena Dunham won for Girls season one. Maisel Maisel uh, started their trajectory uh, at Globes. At the Globes, I think Handmaid's Tale did the same thing in their 100%. first season. Um, so they do a lot of stuff where they they'll they'll kind of bring something to the forefront that maybe a lot of people haven't heard about yet. Right. By that same token because they like so many new things, they end up forgetting about some older shows that are still going strong. 100%. So we've got some snubs, we've got uh we've got some surprises here. Uh but they they break it down. They do drama, comedy and uh and limited. then they do limited series or movie uh together. And then yeah. the weirdest thing that they do and I've never understood it uh, they they lump all of them into supporting, so yeah. uh, so supporting actor and actress are can be from a comedy series, a drama series, a TV movie. It's really hard to gauge, yeah. in my opinion, a supporting role in a two hour movie for television versus a twenty two episode of. Uh, uh, of, of a drama or a comedy right. series, but that's how they do it. Uh, they do the same thing for film. They they yeah. lump comedy and dramas. Well, they there. also put movies that aren't comedies into the comedy section. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they and they did it again this year. But yes. we're talking the TV side, and the okay. TV side is jam packed with nominations. Yeah. So uh, you want to kick it off real quick? Sure. With the, so the, the, the you want to start you want to start big and go small. Yeah, go big and go All small. Right. All right. So in drama, you have the Americans Bodyguard. Woo! Homecoming, Killing Eve, Pose. Now, of those shows, I am just starting Homecoming, and I have not watched Pose, and I don't know anybody that I... I've never talked to anybody that does, so... I, I was just getting some texts from my wife uh, who was like, we have new shows that we need to watch. Okay. She's like, I'm hearing Pose is really good. I, I didn't I didn't watch it. I saw a lot of promos for it during Versace. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and, that's when I saw and it. That, and, and, and then I kind of forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I finished Homecoming uh, last week. Loved it. Okay. Love Homecoming. Really smart. Can't wait for season two. All right, I'm uh, I've heard then. fantastic things about Killing Eve, and I'm going to binge that uh, uh, probably it's over the winter break. good. Sandra O oh is a stand out in yeah that well and she's host she's co-hosting the globe oh, yeah with andy samberg the classic comedy team of samberg and o uh <laughs> o samberg sandra 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 samberg sandy andy sandra <laughs> so it'd be andra what would so there... yeah <laughs> oberg <laughs> Oberg. Oberg. Oberg's pretty Oberg. good. Oberg. I don't know. I don't know He's what. He's an their... Irish Jewish fella. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what their. Uh, I don't know what their comedy duo team is going to be, but it's going to be an interesting show. They, yeah. They they were presenters for was it the Emmys, Emmys or the, the, the Oscars? I forget. Uh, and they had a funny bit. They they tore the envelope in half. Yeah. Well, she was the I'm... first Asian woman to be nominated for a lead actress in a drama in right. the Emmys. Right. And uh, and 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 he. Is always hilarious, and, yeah. and and that week at the so nine nine 
The Globes, yeah, the Globes premiere uh, are on Sunday the sixth, yeah. and then later that week is the season premiere of Nine Nine on NBC. On NBC, yeah. uh, and the, speaking of Nine Nine, if you go to Collider.com, Dorian sat down with the cast. He went to he went to a set visit, and yeah, he he uh, he sat down with some of the cast members. They talked about Chelsea Peretti's planned exit, mm-hmm. which they had not filmed yet. Uh, so they're filming it soon. So she she was still there. And uh, they're talking about the move to NBC and everything yeah. else. So, Speaking uh, of endings, too, I saw Julie Louis-Dreyfus post on her Instagram today. <gasps> yeah, I saw the that. The final table read for the final I episode I saw of that Veep. photo, and I cannot wait for the final season yeah. of Veep. I'm going to try to get Sam Richardson to come in here. You should. Yeah. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm definitely going to get him for the Josh McCuga show, and I want to get him in here to talk TV with us, too. Yeah. Because uh, I want to talk about Detroiters as I well. I know you want to. I need, I need to binge Detroiters. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I, the easiest binge in the world, dude. Because there's only it, there's, two seasons. No. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. It's great. But yeah, so that's the drama category. Who do you uh, think wins out of All right. Uh, I think if, if the HFPA is known to do what they do, I think it'll go to Homecoming. Okay. Uh, maybe Killing Eve. Okay. My person, I would love to see the Americans win. Yeah. Uh, I think it's in. I I don't know if they can pull out the you know the win for the whole run versus the new season that everyone loved, right? Kind of thing. So I it's I I have a really hard time predicting any Globe nominations because they're the, the HFPA just makes no sense, right? A lot of times I I want. I, I want, and I think Americans is going to get the uh, the career win. Yeah, you I think, think it, yeah. you think they can do it? Because they never have. Yeah, I I, yeah. I would love to, I would love to see it. I th- I'm I'm thinking that might happen more with some of the acting categories. Okay, and then they they go Makes different sense. different way in the dramas, which so, is ridiculous that Kerry Washington didn't win. Like, Kerry Russell, Kerry sorry. Russell. Well, Kerry Washington also should Great. should have won for Scandal. And I didn't At love the show. Point. Yeah, I loved the show, but yeah. uh, uh, or excuse me, I didn't love the show, but I loved her performance. Yeah. Uh, okay. So comedy, yep. we've got Barry, Betty, another great first season. Mm-hmm. The Good Place, which I love, mm-hmm. uh, just got a renewal. Kidding, which I didn't finish. I couldn't get through it. I I watched the first couple and liked what I was seeing, but I didn't finish the whole series. It was the kind of show you told me to watch the second episode. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Then I watched the third one, and yeah. I was like, "This is not going to keep me entertained." I just, I did not like the tone of the show. Fair enough. So Fair I stopped. Enough. But and then we have the Kaminsky method, which is a new series. Uh, I know I, a, I have a not Amanda Makuga favorite. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't start it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Chuck Lorre's single cam. Uh, I think it's his first single cam comedy uh-huh. that he's produced on Netflix uh, with uh, Michael Douglas and Alan Arkin. Mm-hmm. And then the beloved, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's marvelous season, Thad. It's I mean, marvelous season. I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this holiday. I'm three I, episodes into season uh, two. It's just so I, this is for this would be for the second season. Yep. So they've seen more episodes than we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's getting great reviews all around. I can't wait to finish it. I got a great review on Clatter.com. I, I would love. I would love to see Maisel go two in a row. Yep. Um, but I wouldn't be disappointed if Barry or The Good Place picked out a win. I think The Good Place is criminally under uh, uh, overlooked in a lot of award categories because yeah. uh, I think it's one of the few serialized sitcoms. But also, too, is there's a lot – we'll get into it a little bit later, but there's a lot of uh, like high-concept comedies that fail miserably. Yes. And this is a high concept comedy that does not. It has a very. Uh, do you remember Pushing Daisies? Do you yeah. remember that show yeah, with yeah, Lee yeah. Pace? Yeah. Uh, it has like that look to it. Right. But the actual delivery, the actual follow through of the show is a lot better. And Ted Danson, no matter what you put him in, same yeah. as Kristen Bell, no yeah. matter what you put the both of those actors in, they knock it out of the park. Even Bad Mom's Christmas, which is a terrible <laughs> movie. Kristen Bell is a standout in the movie. Yeah. She's great. I'll watch her I'll watch her in just about anything. She hosts a ton 100%. of ton of specials for like the Disney parks. Yes. And I'm like, I'm just gonna watch this sure. for two hours because yeah. Kristen Bell's just a, a delight. I've tried to listen to Dak Shepard's podcast and I I don't love it. But when he has Kristen Bell on, well, I'm like, you they, know what? I'm gonna listen to this episode. They, they seem like the coolest couple in Hollywood, yeah. uh, and I, 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 I grew a new appreciation for Dax on yeah. uh, Parenthood. Parenthood, and uh, and because I thought he was fantastic in that show. Yeah. But uh, I, yeah, I, I love the Good Place. I love Dancing and Bell and the new the, the new stars that that show has created. Yeah, uh, uh, Darcy Carden is a huge. I'm a huge fan of hers now. She's yeah, also she's on great. Barry. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and what, Jamil, uh, the the woman that the the other two that the two that play the other two cast or the other three cast members, and I'm blanking on Jamila Jamil is uh, is is the woman that plays. Uh, um, Say your name. Oh God, 
Oh my god, Tahani. Tahani. Yeah. Yeah. She plays Tahani. Uh, she's uh, she's also she just uh, she she's voicing a new uh, a new Disney uh, Disney Junior okay. uh, show. So she's getting a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Wow, I'm really blanking on it. Darcy Everyone's Carden, name. Manny Jacinto. Yeah, I'm Man- at those yeah Manny Jacinto uh, is going to be in Top Gun 2, actually. Oh, no shit. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually really curious about that because I want to see him play someone that's not that's not an idiot. Right. So I, I'm, I'm curious to see his range. The casting in Top Gun 2 is pretty interesting, but that, that's not that's here a, That's not here in the But yeah, I, I, I do go, love The Good Place. I'm going to go Mrs. Maisel back to back. I think they can do it. I think they could pull it off. I think there's enough, I mean, especially right off the Emmys win. Mm-hmm. But if I was gonna pick a one that would steal it, I think it would be Barry. Barry Barry is a very tough contender. I think Barry had a fantastic first season. Yeah. Uh, and I think that if you're if yeah, if you're going to go in a different route, yeah. uh, like you're like, oh, Maisel already had their thing, they already got their gold. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna go with that that new new and, and there you go. It's it's one hundred percent. And the thing that you won't get this year is Veep, because Veep will be available for next year. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then limited series or movie. Now, this is an interesting category. Mm-hmm. So we've got The Alienist, mm-hmm. which was a TNT limited series. Daniel Brühl. Daniel Brühl. And, uh, Versace, and the, which Ver- I was. Versace was incredible. Escape at Danamora. Has been awesome. I am loving Me that. Too. It's It's so good. If Patricia Arquette doesn't win, I mean, I, I would be, sh- I mean, legitimately and then you've shocked. Got, and then you've got Sharp Objects, which we watched. Awesome. Uh, and A Very English Scandal, which I didn't see. That's with Hugh Grant. Yeah, I didn't see that either. And Ben Wishaw. But uh, I would have picked... Versace was incredible. It was good. And I thought I would have picked Sharp Objects to be the winner 100%. before I saw Escape of Danamora. Yeah. It, I to me that that is it's the best limited series. Now granted I haven't seen the ending, but right. so far I think it's the best limited series that that I've seen this year. 100%. I, I would go Danamora on this one. I enjoyed Versace. I didn't I didn't love it. Uh, I didn't watch and Sharp Objects. I thought was very very slow until yeah. like the last I th- episode. I, I love the last two hours. Yeah, two. The yeah. first the first six were hard to get. So through. I'm gonna go Dana Moore on that one too. Yeah. All right. So you got actress in a drama. You got Katrina Belf from Pro- Outlander. From Outlander. David Griffin's favorite. Yep. Elizabeth Moss, uh, Handmaid's Tale. Sandra O oh for Killing Eve. Julia Roberts, Homecoming. Carrie Russell, The Americans. Now, if they want to remedy the Emmy, yeah. they give it to they Carrie give it to Russell. Carrie Russell. But it's the HFPA. Do they just go ahead and give it to the star, Julia Roberts? Yeah, I don't. I mean, Julie, I have again. I haven't seen Homecoming, so I can't speak. But Julia Roberts is obviously always. It won't be Elizabeth Moss. It may be Sandra Oh, but I doubt it. It definitely won't be Katrina Balf. I think, man. If yeah, I think it's Carrie Russell or Julia Roberts. Yeah, I, I think so too. That because it's interesting. Elizabeth Moss is nominated for Extra Drama, but The Handmaid's Tale did not get a drama nomination no. this year. So well, I mean. Good. Yeah. Because, so uh, so, yeah, season, so, two so good. season two uh, did not get a drama nomination. Yeah. I think uh, I think that means that her chances are, are a little dwindling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would love to see Carrie Russell pick up the nomination the or win. pick up the win. Me too. Uh, as much as I love Homecoming, Julia Roberts was not my favorite character on the show. Was it Shea Wiggum? Shea Wiggum is my f- definitely incredible. Wiggum, yeah. But uh, uh, no, Stephen James uh, oh, okay. l- crushes crushes that su- that show. Uh, I think Julia Roberts was the anchor, okay. and I think that co- by the end of the series, by the end of season two, it, her role will be fully formed. Okay. Uh, but I I would go Carrie Russell on this uh, in a heartbeat. Got and it. then speaking of Stephen James, actor in a drama. Uh, he's nominated for Homecoming. Jason Bateman for Ozark, Richard Madden for uh, Bodyguard, Billy Porter for Pose, mm-hmm. and Matthew Reese. Mm-hmm. Now, Matthew Reese obviously won the Emmy. Mm-hmm. Uh, for this that. is a stacked category. It is. This year it is. Too. It is very stacked. I like. I said I love Stephen James. Richard Madden was a uh, surprise. Yeah, he was su- really good. Surprise, homecoming. big guy in in in. Uh, it, in in bodyguard there and then Billy Porter again we haven't seen Pose None but of us have. I'm I'm wondering if the HFPA is like hey we really like Pose we really like Ryan Murphy stuff maybe 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 there's some surprises there because we haven't seen them I want I I don't think Bateman will win no. though I loved his performance I don't think Stephen James will win but I do think that Richard Madden will I think I Richard think, I think I, Richard Madden could pull out the win yeah, on that yeah because it it it's a B, it, it it was a BBC series. Hollywood Foreign Press, mm-hmm. uh, they they have it kind of a spot. A, they have a spotty record when it comes to giving awards to streaming services. Yeah, uh, for acting categories specifically. So, 
Uh, yeah, I, I could I could totally see Richard Madden taking yeah. the win on that. All right, then you've got actress comedy Kristen Bell, Candace Perkin from Murphy Brown. Yeah, she, Allison, she is a longtime favorite of the HFPA. She sure is. Allison Brie for Glow. Yes. Rachel Brosnahan, Deborah Messing for Will and Grace. Now, okay. I feel like the Candace Bergen and Deborah Messing ones were just kind of like, yeah, here. Yeah, here yeah. Go. They're going to get the nominations. I don't sure. think they're going to take a win. No. I'd be very surprised this if is Will be, and Grace for gets me, in a win. For me, this is between Allison Brie and Rachel Brosnahan. Correct. Now, Brosnan won it last year. Yep. And there isn't a better performance on television than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Completely in my agree. opinion. Completely agree. But Allison Brie carries glow. She is so good on that show. So good. And that is a show that, unlike a lot of television that we watch, mm-hmm. season two of Glow is better than season one. 100 percent And season one I loved. Yeah. But they did stuff in the second season. Allison Brie has arcs in that second season uh yeah. that I was not expecting that her performance blew me away. Yep. She's a very versatile actor. We've seen her in Mad Men doing uh playing the 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 troubled housewife. Right. We've w- we've community. seen her we've seen her in Community playing playing a very very different roles. I I think that this role is tailored to her mm-hmm. in Glow and I would love to see her win as much as I love Brosnahan yeah. going 2 for 2. Uh I I could I could I could see it but going I think either we're way. Both between either yeah, one of those. and yeah. and I'd, I'd be fine either way. Okay, I'd be fine either way. Now you got actor comedy. Sasha Baron Cohen for Who Is America. Uh, I heard, Jim Carrey for Kidding. I heard he's already uh, invited Sarah Palin to be his date. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Jim Carrey for Kidding. Michael Douglas for Kaminsky Method. Donald Glover for Atlanta. Bill Hader for Barry. Uh, this entire category is a toss up for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, d- Who do th- I want to win? Bill Hader. Who do I think could win? Donald Glover. Who do I think might get a nod? Michael Douglas. Yeah. I don't think Sasha Baron Cohen I, gets it. I don't think he gets it either. I love I that really they, was I disappointed love that by that show. I, 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 I it started strong and yeah. ended very weak for me. Uh I, I had very high hopes and it did not deliver. Yeah. Uh I think that Sasha and Carrie and Douglas feel like those star studded nominations that they do to get them mm-hmm. to get them and their significant others to walk the red carpet and yep. show up to the Golden Globes, sure. which they're famous for. Uh, hashtag the tourist. Yeah. <laughs> um, never forget. Never, never forget. The never tourist. forget the tourist. Uh, but <laughs> Donald Glover is an interesting one because Atlanta got snubbed. Yeah. Uh, with comedy. This is the only Series. this is the only nomination they get this season. And they got overlooked at the Emmys. So true. so does the HFPA go go that route and make that make it up and give him the nominate give him the win? Or does Bill Hader take it? I think Bill Hader's performance is better than Donald Glover's. I this season of this Atlanta. Season, this yeah, season two of Atlanta versus Previous season, season one of Atlanta. versus season one of, of yeah. Barry. I, yeah. I loved Bill Hader in this. Yeah. Uh, I loved I mean, again, he's the creator of the show. He yeah. directed the pilot. Like he 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 was involved with a lot of the writing. This is his role. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could totally see them taking all of that into consideration. Um Jim Carrey, I I mean yeah, it, maybe, maybe he's if, just playing. He's just doing sunshine and spotless mind. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it meets uh, meets death to smoochie. Right, 100%. And, but I could totally see. I could see them just throwing a curveball. Yeah, and 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 like Glover hater kind of splitting the vote. Sure, and then them going with a carrier at Douglas. Right. Uh, okay, next actress limited series. Uh, you got Amy Adams from Sharp Objects, Patricia Arquette, Dana Mora, Connie Britton, Dirty John. Which I listened to the podcast and I, I watched the first episode of Dirty John. The Misses and I liked that podcast. It was a very yeah. interesting podcast. Yeah. The show is good. It's good. Uh, I mean, it's Bravo. So, um, and then Laura Dern, The Tale, which I didn't watch. No. And then Regina King, Seven Seconds. Now, Amanda and I forgot that we watched this show. Until the Emmy nominations Until came Until the up. Emmy. Yeah. And then she won the Emmy. Right. Because for Regina s- King is amazing in every single role that she's ever yeah. done, going all the way back to when she was on procedural cop shows yes. like uh, Southland. She's great. Regina King is great. Seven Seconds, to me, was- That was that sh- Venus Sud show, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, very cookie cutter and almost it ended and a man and I were both just like, huh, <laughs> right? Like it was okay. Uh, but before Dana Mora came out, I would say Amy Adams has this category. Yeah. Dana Mora comes out and Patricia Arquette is, ju- I mean, three episodes in, I, in the first scene of the entire show, uh-huh. I said Patricia Arquette is going to win every award for this. Yeah, I did too. I did too, but not, that was before the series ended. Mm-hmm. Oh no no I'm sorry no, no, no. I'm thinking I'm I'm you're thinking Amy Adams yeah I'm, I'm thinking, thinking of Patricia Arquette the first scene yeah. with yeah. Bonnie Hunt oh yeah 
she is going to win this. I yeah. don't think there's anybody else that wins this. I think this is Patricia Arquette. And I, I, I and I'm totally okay with that. As yeah. much as because we all said that about Amy Adams yeah. when Sharp Objects started, and I think that way more people know about Sharp Objects than know about Escape at Danamora. So yep. that could play a play a part but you have again you have to remember the hfpa is a very small insular group of people Mm -hmm. and uh the hollywood foreign press they know about the show even if even if the masses don't like sharp objects was everywhere on the twitter and the facebook's and the instagrams and the memes and the things but uh it it it, uh, danamora hasn't had that love yeah but i think that it's a far so far, at least, it's a far better performance. Yeah, and agreed. it's a f- much different performance. No, I noticed something, and because uh, she talks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> unlike unlike sharp objects where they just emoted the whole thing. But that that is that that's Nothing, more with yeah. Jean Marc Vallée. But uh, whatever. Real quick on Dana Mora, and I noticed at the credits because I was like, this looks familiar. It's shot in Pittsburgh. That's prison. I'm, se- I'm is serious. Is it really? Yes. I assumed it was like. Yeah. Is I assumed they went to Canada. No, it's. Uh, the, I saw at the end like Pittsburgh oh. crew. Yeah. So and so. Did they shoot it in that old prison uh, where they shot Law Abiding Citizen? <sighs> no. Okay. Okay. So because because I, I worked on that movie. Did you? Yeah. So <laughs> the exteriors are at Danamore. Oh, okay. The okay. interiors of the prison are at um, the the old county jail in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this beautiful castle of a jail in downtown Pittsburgh? Yeah, right. Uh, they built this other one on the highway, about a mile away, not even too far. That is creepy because when you're driving by at night, the prison windows are lit up, and Ooh. and you have to drive in and out. It's on the main vein going in and out of the city. Of Pittsburgh. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Yeah. But the the old county jail is where they're shooting the interiors, gotcha. especially the cells, because it looks so old and decrepit. Right, right, right. And Dana Mora, same thing. Fair enough. Uh, okay, supporting or sorry, uh, act, yeah, supporting act, act, actor. No, no, actor oh. in a limited series or movie. What did I? Did, we, oh, there, my bad. My yeah, bad. yeah. So, so we, we got had, Banderas yeah. for Picasso, which I watched because I really liked the Einstein one. Right. And, I did not like Picasso uh, yeah, as much. Yeah. yeah. Um, it basically Picasso and Einstein really hints on the fact that they were both just horny men. Yes. Like really and truly they were just sex maniacs. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Antonio Banderas, uh, Picasso, Daniel Bull, Alienist, Damien, uh, Darren Chris for Versace, which he won the Emmy for. Correct. Cumberbatch for Patrick Melrose, which I didn't watch, and Hugh Grant for A Very English Scandal, again, which I didn't watch. Yeah. If I'm going to be the one that wins this, I think Darren Chris wins again. I think so too. It was I, fantastic. I, he, he carried that whole show. He carried that whole show. That, uh, I, I've said it a thousand times. It was not the assassination of Johnny Versace. It was the mind of a serial killer. Yes. And he was the lead, and he brought it. He it brought was, it. He brought it to every single episode. It was the real making a murder. Yes. Yes. It really was. And scripted. and and I I my my issues with the formatting and or mm-hmm. anything else, but uh, Darren Chris's performance was hands down the best part of the show mm-hmm. uh, and now that leads us into the supporting character yeah. uh, categories because we, it again this is all jumbled together we got Alex Borstein for the Marvis, Marvelous yeah. Mrs. Maisel which she won the Emmy for Right. Patricia Clarkson for Sharp Objects mm-hmm. Penelope Cruz uh, Donna, uh, for Donna. Donatella Versace. Uh, I oof. it was terrible. I hated that performance. Oh my god, it was brutal. They should have just gotten Maya Rudolph. Yeah. Uh, Tandy Newton for Westworld, yeah. uh, who was incredible this season. I know okay. you didn't watch it. No. Uh, this is Westworld's only nomination this year. She good because she was the only thing in that show that I liked. I I, I get it. Okay, <laughs> we'll we'll have a different episode arguing Westworld, but. <laughs> Tandy Newton, especially in season two, was hands down the best part of the series. Okay. So I love that she got nominated for that. And then uh, Yvonne Strahovski for Handmaid's Tale. You almost did that as well as uh, Antonio Jaramillo. Uh, Yvonne Str- now, I've loved Yvonne Strahovski. <laughs> since uh, Chuck. Since Chuck. Yep. And the joke was that, you know, that everyone was like, oh, well, she can't act. She was just this pretty girl that's playing this agent. Right. They eventually gave her some stuff to do. Sure. I mean, everyone said the same thing about Zach Levi, and now he's friggin' Shazam, yeah. and he's going to be in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. In that an was what or was two. spoiled for me on Twitter. Is oh well, some... he was he. That casting was announced like eight I know, ago. but I forgot. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I didn't want to remember. Fair enough. He was I in like the I like Zach Levi in. I loved him in Chuck. Uh, I really. 
I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yes. I am. There's not one part of me that is looking forward to Shazam. I just don't really care. Okay. Um, That's fair. But I do really like Zach Levi. Yeah. He's like, he's really uh, They did a great performances. They did a, a you, you'll never watch this because it's a yeah. musical, but they did a, they did a filmed, they filmed one of the last performances of the musical that he did yeah. on Broadway with Laura Benatti. Uh-huh. Uh, and they crushed it. It yeah. was great. It was really, it was really good to see. It was, um, uh, it's the it's the it's the play that became the musical that then was adapted to be uh, You've Got Mail the movie. Oh, okay. Uh, it takes place in and it, so it's like the pen pals that <laughs> the pen pals that fall in love with each other kind yes. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was very very fun, very uh, very entertaining. Musical. Quick story of why I very much like Zach Levi. So I'm at Comic Con four years ago, maybe, yeah. and he I don't know if he still does. He does not. Okay, he used to host that Nerd HQ party. Yeah, uh, we played with the band played 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 their gig. That yes, one night. you did. Yes, that was did. the this is the same Comic Con I'm talking. Yeah, about. yeah. So I'm there for the Friday night party, I think, or maybe it was the Thursday night. I'm not really sure. No, it was Friday night. It's Friday. Night. And we're all there, and I got up on stage with the DJ and was like dancing and kind of whatever, and he was like digging it. And one of the security guys was like, "Yo, you got to come down." And Zach Levi was like, "Leave him up there," and I was. <laughs> Like all right, so Sweet. I appreciate Zach Levi for having my back on the, that one. The band played the Saturday gig, okay, and uh, and and we didn't really interact with him much. And then he was off to the side, uh-huh. and then like his people came over to me, and they're like, "Can you uh, can you guys let let the guys know Zach would love to like sing with them yeah. if like the, if that's cool?" Because he was like off stage, like yeah. humming along to all the '90s songs that yeah. we were playing, and we were like, "Of course, that's a bit. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, bring him on." So like, I'm like motioning to the band, like, I'm "Like, guys, invite him on, yeah. like, let him on." And then he he jumped on, and they did awesome. a couple songs, and yeah, he's, he he had literally just wrapped that musical like yeah. a week prior, so he had, he 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 was singing it. He was he was in the full Broadway mode, and yeah. like, yeah, I mean, he's entangled. Like, the dude can sing. Oh, he can sing. He can sing. Yeah, he's a talented. Uh, guy. He's a very talented guy. I, okay. I, so that and then. Actor in a limited series. Well, we didn't say who you think you're going to win. Oh, uh, oh, it's Darren Chris. Oh, no, 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 no for actress for supporting actress. Um, I think it's between Alex Borstein and Patricia Clarkson. Yeah, see, yeah, Pat- Patricia Clarkson is the one that I thought was like a lock. Yeah, in sh- for sharp objects. But Alex Borstein, dude, is so good in this I role, and her. she didn't win t- last year. Right, she won the Emmy. She won the Emmy. She, she has not the won Golden the Globe. Globe. So. I think she wins this. I could, I could see that because I, see I think that. all of these drama girls. Yeah, <laughs> that was wrong. All these actresses in the drama <laughs> series, I apologize. Yeah, uh, are gonna. I think they're gonna cancel each other out. I think you're right about that. And I think Alex Borstein gets the votes. I think I think you might be right. Uh, supporting actor, Alan Arkin for Kaminsky Method. Again, I watched four episodes of this show. Yeah, what what I wanted it to be was Grace and Frankie. Right. But it wasn't Grace and Frankie. Grace and Frankie might be the most heartwarming show. Yeah. About two old friends. Ever in the history of television. I think it's better than Golden Girls, and you can fight me on that one, or anybody that loves Golden hey. Girls, fight me on it. Grace and Frankie, and is a very, very underrated show. And I got to give Roxy Cryer, Roxy Cryer, Roxy Stryer credit on this one, because she's like, you have to watch Grace and Frankie. I think you'll love it. And I turned my parents onto it, and they love it, even though my dad hates Jane Fonda. Um, <laughs> the- what if Roxy Stryer married John Cryer and became Roxy Stryer Cryer? <laughs> I don't know. I used to tell the joke when I was 11. I would walk into him and be like, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar married Paula Abdul. His name would be Paula Abdul Abdul Abdul-Jabbar. Everybody's like, all right, Josh, walk away now. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Uh, But for, so Alan Arkin, Kaminsky Method, Kieran, Kieran Culkin. Now, I just started Succession this week. Awesome. I friggin' loved it. I meant to text you about it. I watched the pilot. Uh, I watched the pilot this this week yeah. and loved it. I knew I was going to like it, and yeah. I didn't. But and I sort of knew where the pilot was going to go. I mean, if anyone has, if anyone's on the fence about this, it's Six Feet Under meets Billions. Yes, one hundred percent. It is the dysfunctional family in Six Feet Under meets the horrible rich guys in Billions, yep. and I adored it. Yep. Brian Cox. Is awesome. incredible. Kiernan Culkin, I immediately was like, this guy, Makes he's going to be doing some fun stuff. Is it in this Kiernan show. or Kieran? Kiernan. You Kiernan. sure about that? Yes, because I saw Macaulay Culkin on, uh, I saw Macaulay Culkin on Fallon? on Fallon, and he is doing, uh, Macaulay Culkin is currently doing a poll on his website to rename his middle name. It's Kieran Culkin. It's on Kieran. IMDb. I thought it was Kiernan. It's Kieran. Kieran. Yeah. Kieran. All right, whatever. Well, Close anyways, enough. whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyways, my, the, the point of the it. point of that story is Macaulay Culkin's changing his middle name depe- depending on who who people vote on Twitter. Uh. And one of the one of the suggestions was his brother Kieran, Kieran. There you and go. then the other one was uh, Macaulay Culkin, so that his name would be Macaulay Macaulay Culkin Culkin. <laughs> And in his words, he's like, that way, if someone asks if I'm Macaulay Culkin, I say, that's my middle name. <laughs> that's pretty damn good. It's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, he's great. And uh, Edgar Ramirez, Versace. He was great, but he was only in about 8% of the yeah, show. Yeah, he's not in it enough for me. Yeah. Uh, English Scandal, again, Ben Wish, I don't know. And then Henry Winkler for Barry. Come on. All right, listen. Come on, Barry. I think Henry Winkler's going to win that. He he got the he got the Emmy. Yeah, finally. Finally got the Emmy. It was very it was very sweet uh, yeah. sweet moment. Standing ovation. Everyone loved it. He's the nicest man in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and anyone that's ever met him will tell you. Um, I would love to see him win the Globe for this as well. Mm-hmm. I could maybe see them giving it to Edgar Ramirez, but I don't think he was in the show enough. No, I don't personally. think it's Edgar Ramirez. I could also maybe see them going to Ben Wishaw, having not seen a very English scandal, so maybe they give that an award. Right, I don't right, know. right. But in, in my personal opinion... This is Henry Winkler's to lose because right. his his job on that show is like nothing else. Oh, it's and amazing! It's 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 tailored for him. It's fantastic. Uh, let's talk about some quick snubs. So this is us got nothing. Nothing. The Connors got nothing. You'll but, get nothing. <laughs> better call Saul. Nothing. Nothing. Which is sh- ah, man. I know it's disappointing. It's disappointing. This is us and Better Call Saul not yeah. getting anything really hurts. Yeah. Especially because This Is Us was a big winner for the first two seasons. Right. Uh, Better Call Saul has you never know, won anything. Never really. won really anything. They've no. gotten some critics critics awards, but yeah. that's about it. Uh, Blackish also nothing. nothing. They've been a big fan. Uh, the Globes have loved them in the past. Oh, for sure. Tracy Ellis Ross won the award a couple years ago. That's right. No, nothing this year. Yellowstone, nothing. I still haven't watched that show, but I do want to. I, I want to f- see it. I feel like that maybe I'll watch it with my father in law because he loves this kind of show. Yeah, like a little, like a like an old school yeah, western style. Yeah, maybe flair. over Christmas a, a walk. Maniac, which I couldn't get through the pilot, Me so I'm I'm okay with I'm okay it with getting that. snubbed. Westworld, I'm clearly okay with that. Yeah. Uh, Hey, Tale didn't get the best drama nomination this year. Atlanta didn't get best comedy this year. Issa Rae didn't get nominated for best uh, best comedy or for best actress. Robin Wright didn't get a nomination uh, for the final season of House of Cards, which, again, I doubt if she ever would have won. But the fact that she didn't get nominated for the Lifetime Achievement Award, Lifetime Achievement, basically. Speaking of Lifetime Achievement Ah! Awards, great segue. You're welcome. Where's the segue button? Uh, this year, they're going to give a Lifetime Achievement Award for television for the first time. They've always done the Cecil B. DeMille Award for the Cecil B. DeMille Award for uh, film achievement. Yes. This year, they're going to give a TV achievement. I assume they're going to do both. Yeah. Um, maybe that means we're going to get a slightly shorter speech for both, which would okay. be great. Awesome. I'm all for that. Sure. Uh, who's going to get it? You think? They're, there's, they're apparently announcing it in the coming days. Gotcha. So maybe it will have already been news by the time this episode airs. But I, as of now, we don't know who it's going to be. Okay. Mm, man. Okay. My thought, fe- male and female. Yeah. Here are my thoughts on male and female. Female, maybe a Candace Bergen. Yeah. I, yeah. She would have been a great choice. Right. Or She's... Diane English, the creator and showrunner of Murphy, Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown. I think they want a name yeah. for the first one. Uh, so, for sure. Do you know for what sure. I mean? So a Candace Bergen in the female, possibly a Betty White. Betty White's always a good call. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. On the male side, I'm thinking of producers. Yeah, okay. So I'm either thinking Lorne Michaels yeah. or a Dick Wolf. I mean, Michaels would be a very clear-cut NBC choice. Yeah. Uh, he produced the Emmys this past year. Andy Samberg's hosting. Yeah. They could bring all the SNL people to to celebrate him. I could also see them going William Shatner. Oh, Bill, um, Bill Shatner. Okay. Uh, for his television achievements and the fact that he doesn't have that many years left. Yeah. Uh, and for the same token as Betty White. Yeah. Uh, they've done Betty White. Like Betty White's had like an entire birthday specials right. uh, given given to her. Julia Louis Dreyfus just won. Oh uh, man. Just won the Mark Twain Prize, which I didn't. F- I forgot to record it. I it, watched. It uh, you can watch it, it all on YouTube. I I, I assume they're going to rerun it uh, on <laughs> PBS before Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't find it immediately. I, I realized that the night after they aired it. Seinfeld uh, speech is weekend. awesome. It's oh, fantastic. I can't. I can't yeah. wait. I, yeah. I love Julia Louis Dreyfus. I'm so glad she's getting the nomination. Yes. Uh, or the the recognition. I could see her. She has the most Emmy wins of all yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. I could see her. I could see that too. But. Veep hasn't even ended yet, so yeah. her getting the lifetime achievement award for year, year one. I feel like they're. I feel like you're right. I feel like they're going to go with a with an old school person. Yes. Uh, uh, again, old school Carl Reiner uh, could be an option for sure. Um, 
Mel Brooks, less television, but yeah. he, he has he had a big hand in the early television. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's going to be an old guy. It's going to be an old guy and an old or old gal. Yeah. One of the two, um, and it's going to be a big name. Could you see a Ted Danson? No, no not yet. Okay. Too soon. Okay. Too soon. I too think soon. I think they're literally, for the first one, they're going to go for a, let's give someone an award before they pass. Right. Uh, who maybe hasn't gotten a ton of love or ha- or could have in various eras, yeah. but somebody that's going to bring not only eyeballs to the ceremony to see their speech, yeah. but also going to bring some big names for the presentation of it. Gotcha. Because uh, I think the Globe, no, makes sense. the Globe nominations are all about who can we get on that red carpet because yeah. it's all about the ratings for that show, which airs January 6th yeah. on NBC. And dun, about dun, dun. causing traffic in Century City. Oh God! I drove through it one year. Oh my God! And the uh, the the Westboro Baptist Church's people were uh-huh. out there with the with the with the, with the the signs. Yeah. And my wife started blowing her horn to get them out of the way, and was like, "No, they're blowing the horn yeah. in support. <laughs> yeah, don't stop don't, it. Don't honk in support of them, please." <laughs> uh, uh, now we said too soon about Ted Danson, but talk about it a little too soon. There's another segue that. Wah, wah. Daredevil got canceled. Yeah, we called, called it. We called. I mean, and we called all of this, and yeah. uh, we talked about it a little bit on Collider Live. Uh, we've talked about it. it uh, Daredevil or Punisher and shows like that probably won't exist on Disney Plus. No, but Disney owns Hulu, so they could go to Hulu. Yeah, they could. They could. I. I. I think. I still think that the more logical option is. I think Daredevil maybe makes an appearance in Punisher Two. Okay. Um. They've already filmed it, so yeah. you know they, it could have happened. I've heard a lot of rumors uh, that it was not Netflix that pulled the plug; it was actually Marvel. Mm-hmm. And I think that that stream that that goes back to the the tensions with the streaming service with Disney Plus versus Netflix, and them saying let's move everything off of there, yeah, and let's not have to deal with co productions between these two entities 100%. anymore. Um, I could maybe see a scenario where a uh, a one of these characters, Daredevil being the most popular, uh, makes their way to one of the Disney Plus services. Yes, the Russo brothers. When we had the when we had the big screening uh, Q and A with them last week, uh, th- they were asked that question, and they were like, "It, it for them." In the film world, it's too difficult to try to shoehorn in the television characters mm-hmm. that are changing changing their arcs so rapidly versus the film characters that are only changing their arcs once every two years. Right. So they were never able to integrate the Netflix MCU or the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. into or the Runaways or anybody else right. uh, into the Fucking films dagger. because the, the writing process is just too rapid on the TV side. Okay. So I could see a scenario where Marvel uses this as a Opportunity to say, well, now we're going to do a limited series with Falcon and White Winter Soldier, and we're going to do a limited series with uh, with Vision and Scarlet Witch. Right. So maybe we can shoehorn them into one of those shows, or put them in a limited series, or give them their own limited limited series. Yeah. Like maybe do a de- another Defenders series. I just don't think that the reception was that. Positive it wasn't that I don't know if they want to do it. Right, I, I could the I could totally sh- see them putting them all in the vault and we never see them again until they reboot one of those characters yeah. in the MCU proper. Right, until we get until until they get to a world where a dare- which could happen after Avengers four. Yeah, and if anyone, I could see honestly fitting into the MCU on film. The only one that really works for me is Luke Cage. Yeah, I was just going to say Luke that, Cage. I think Daredevil and Punisher are too dark yeah. to fit into the film world. They could fit in the DCEU. <laughs> yeah, fair point. <laughs> uh, but I could I could see a Luke Cage. My computer shut down. That's what that's. I was wondering was. what that. Did you just run out of battery? No, it's at 40%, but it just it. I it had just to decided to die? Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, much like uh, Daredevil, it ended yeah. too oh! soon. Oh, burn! Well so, done. All right. Well, yeah. So I don't know. I I I have very low expectations about ever seeing these characters again. Okay. In I mean, their listen. current iteration, because I think these actors are not going to their their contracts are going to expire. <clears throat> yep. And unless Marvel says we really want to work with Charlie Co- Charlie Cox and and Charlie Cox Charlie Cox there, <laughs> uh, we really want to work with him or Mike Coulter, who was a question on Jeopardy. Hey, he was last, last night. night. Uh, but. Uh, I could see them maybe giving them a, uh, like an extension, but yeah. otherwise, I think they're all going to move on to other projects. I think I think these characters died with 
Netflix, I for better they, or for worse. I think they all died with Iron Fist. Well, <laughs> so you're not wrong. Honest, but you're not wrong. If I could see any of them getting a Spe- season somewhere, but somewhere else. Speaking of Iron Fist, they are now uh, working on Shang Chi, the Asia, an Asian character who's plays in the Iron Fist universe uh-huh. a little bit here and there in the comics. Uh, he's going to be the first Asian superhero film ah. uh, in development. Nice. And so maybe they move some of those storylines or characters from the Iron Fist universe into his universe. It's definitely I don't possible. know where all of the overlap is in terms of the canon, but yeah. it could happen. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, next. I can't see my That's all right. Uh, next up, we got uh, a, new, a trailer for Miracle Workers. Yeah. Oh. With Steve Buscemi and Daniel Radcliffe as the as God and an angel. Yeah. It looks hilarious. It's I got to be honest. It's a limited series. I haven't seen Steve Buscemi in something in so long. It's been a, it's been too long. I, I love I love Buscemi. I got so excited when I saw his face. <laughs> I, I mean, was just so I, excited. I, I loved Boardwalk the whole way through. Yeah, oh, I loved that he got to finally lead a, lead a series. Me too. Uh, I I've I loved his I loved his takes in Thirty Rock yep. uh, as the as the narc. Uh, he's very <laughs> funny. He's always he's always quirky and awkward. Yeah. Uh, it's set in the offices of Heaven Incorporated. Right. Uh, where God sounds when, very new new uh, good place ish. Yeah. Is cool. Let's Fine see by me. It's through. created by uh, it's created by Simon Rich, who yeah. did who's an SNL the youngest SNL writer of all time, mm-hmm. who then created Man Seeking Woman. Yep, uh, which, which was awesome. very funny, very yes. underrated, uh, but uh, very entertaining. And uh, it, it also stars uh, Geraldine Viz Wanathan okay. from Blockers. Oh yeah, who was hilarious yes. in Blockers. Yes. Stole the show in a lot of Blockers. Karen yep. Sony, who was in Deadpool. Yeah. Uh, I think he was also on Betas on Amazon. I never watched Betas. Uh, it was funny. Okay. It, it, it was it was a precursor to Silicon Valley. Silicon gotcha. Valley was more was it more entertaining, but block Betas had its moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, John Bass, who was apparently from Baywatch, uh, yeah. I don't know the name offhand. Baywatch Nights. Uh, not Baywatch, Baywatch Nights. Mm. I think the movie Baywatch. Oh, got it. Got oh it. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the kind of the goofy guy from Bay, uh, from the oh, Baywatch the, trailers. The, the bigger guy that the bigger guy somehow fell in love with Kelly Rowland. Uh, you're saying that like you saw the movie because I didn't. I did. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Kelly Rohrbach is like a dream girl. She's a SI swimsuit model, Victoria's Secret model, and she's like a six handicap. She's <laughs> an amazing golfer. I'm like, good <laughs> lord. Is it stop? Amanda's like, stop watching the Pro-Am. I'm like, Kelly Rohrbach's on. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this trailer looks really funny. It's only 30 seconds. It's a TBS limited series. Premieres in February. I like that it's a limited uh, series. I like that too. I think that the advantage of that is that's how you get uh, someone like Buscemi and mm-hmm. someone like Radcliffe right. uh, involved because they all have very different projects. Yeah. And a lot, they're very busy a lot of the times. So I like this idea. Uh, I want to see more mm-hmm. limited comedy series. I think is a very funny idea uh, for these cable networks to just do... A eight or ten episode binge. Yes. TBS is doing some really funny stuff. Yep. Uh, I still need to watch Wrecked. Search Party. Search Party, great. I heard. I think TBS I, has some of the most underrated comedies on television. Yes. First of all, Angie Tribeca. Love Angie Tribeca. I don't know if are we ever going to get another season. Of that? I don't know. They've the, never said it was so good. So good. Uh, Wrecked with uh, my buddy Asif Ali. Great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the one with um, shoot. Uh, ser- so Search Party is great, too, and there's a fourth one that I'm not thinking of. Uh, I want to say Superstore, but Superstore's on NBC. <laughs> it's not the I Big Bang Theory. They just run that in reruns. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but No, but it's, it, TBS has some great comedies, yeah. and I like that they're doing this show. I yeah. like that they got Buscemi. I like this idea of a high-concept comedy. I dig it. I yeah, dig. it's very yeah. very funny. All right, yeah. uh, let's skip ahead and finish up the news real quick. Okay, so go. Uh, we, got, we got two renewals. Narcos Mexico is going to get a second Boom. season. Officially, uh, you're loving it. I need to start it. Oh, uh, it's you, incredible. It's great. It's incredible. Yeah. And as we said, Good Place gets season four. Boom. Really excited about that. Yep. Assume it's another 13 episode order. Yeah. That seems to work really well for them. Let me recommend something to all the viewers out there. If you're sitting around Christmas and you're like, I don't know what to watch, I don't know what to watch, watch The Good Place. Yeah. It is a very fun show that you can kind of go in and out of. Uh, you don't have to pay like super close attention. It can just be on in the background all of Christmas and you will get enjoyment out of it every time you tune it. Yes. And uh, what if what you, I would also after recommend After you finish Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. What I would also recommend is going into it blind as much as possible. <laughs> yes. I watched season 1 not really knowing what the story was going to be and I binged 1 and 2 together in like 4 days. Oh, so good. And they're so it's so entertaining. And they're only 13 episodes. Yeah. So. Uh all right, big news here in on Hulu, 
So we keep talking about these uh, book series, crime book series that are going to make universes. get get TV shows. We talked about uh, uh, we talked about the Jack Reacher universe, yep. which doesn't have home yet. No. Uh, we talked uh, obviously. Nef- uh, Amazon has Jack Ryan. Yeah. Uh, Netflix has Jack somebody. Yeah. I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, but Jack Frost <laughs> is back. Uh, but Hulu is now getting the Grisham universe. Yeah. Not Jack, but John. John, John Grisham. Grisham. His friends call him his, Jack. His, his friends call him Jack Grisham. Yeah. Uh, so the Grisham universe, this is a very interesting idea. They're doing two shows. Okay. They're doing uh, The Rainmaker, which yeah. was, uh, was famously the... a Coppola movie in the 90s. Right. And Rogue Lawyer. Uh, <laughs> Sounds yeah, like my DUI title. attorney in 2005. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Ooh, too close to too home. Too close to uh, home. Uh, so the Rainmaker and Rogue Lawyer are going to be two separate shows, okay. and they're saying you can watch them vertically, meaning you can binge one and then binge the other, mm-hmm. or you can watch them linear- linearly like a television network, watch Rainmaker episode one, then watch Rogue Lawyer episode one, and go bounce back and forth like you would like a Tuesday show and a Thursday show. Huh. Because they're going to have a lot of inter- interwoven characters. Smart. They're set in the same universe. Christian smart. This is smart. It's, it's very... I. I've said this before. I love the idea of these crime series novels yeah. heading to streaming platforms because I don't think they work as well as two-hour movies. I agree. They get a little jumbled and a little, a uh, little hokey, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that we've seen with uh, with Bosch, we've seen with oh, Jack man, Ryan, we've seen really Bosch. good, we've seen really good long form adaptations. Yes. And I think that John Grisham has kind of gotten the short end of the stick in a lot of the movies. Mm-hmm. Not all of them. There's some really good John Pelican Grisham Brief movies. Pelican Brief is good. Pelican Brief. The Firm yeah. is good. The Firm. The Firm. Yeah. I, I love It was a book, terrible TV series yeah, on NBC. Bad. Real bad. Uh, really bad. But uh, I, I enjoy the Tom Cruise movie. Yeah. But, um, I, I like the idea of the the long form Grisham stuff, and by that token, his nonfiction book, The Innocent Man, The Innocent Man, is being made into a documentary series on Netflix. I just watched Comes the trailer out next weekend. Yeah, next, December fifteenth. Uh, it's it's kind of taking 14th. the it's kind of taking the Making a Murderer slot yes. from a couple years ago. That Christmas slot. Yeah, uh, nothing like true murders for a Christmas miracle. Woo! <laughs> uh, Innocent Man. Uh, it's a true crime story, like uh-huh. stranger than fiction yeah. story. Uh, about police corruption and and coerced confessions and all mm-hmm. that stuff that's very popular in the in the pod, in the podcast and docu docu series yes. format uh, looks really good very high uh, high production values. Agreed. I, I'm excited. Grisham is Grisham is interviewed a lot in the in the series. And I gotta be honest with you, I didn't know what John Grisham looked like. That's the first time I've ever seen the movie. I di- I was not. I didn't know what he looked like, yeah. and I didn't know that he wrote a nonfiction book. Me neither. So yeah. there you go. Uh, then we've got Ben Mendelsohn in The Outsider. It's uh, the first episodes are directed by Jason Bateman. From... HBO series adaptation of Stephen King book. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming since it's Ben Mendelsohn, he's playing the villain. No, he's playing the hero. He's playing Thank the detective. God. He's playing a detective. He plays. The, they uh, Hollywood keeps cast like they saw him as a bad guy one time, one and time. they're like, he's got to be the villain in right. every movie. No, uh, and he's playing the villain again in uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, but uh, he, I love him. Uh, I was first He's turned awesome. on him in Bloodline, and he nobody blew, can smoke a cigarette like Ben blew, blew me away. Yeah. Uh, uh, can't wait. Uh, can't, I'm very excited for another HBO series. Uh, me too. Uh, love the idea that Jason Bateman's doing more directing work uh, after after Ozark. Yep. And, uh, and 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 Bad Words is a very underrated movie. Very funny. Awesome. Very that movie funny is movie. Friggin' hysterical. It is. It is friggin' hysterical, yeah. and they don't say friggin' in the movie. No, they definitely uh, do lots not. of bad words. Yes. Very entertaining. Uh, but I, I'm happy about all this, and uh, and you know Stephen King Boom. again, again an author that benefits from long form. Yes, so, a lot of like the best Stephen King movies are based on his novellas. Yep, and the best, and then the, the TV series can kind of go through these longer books. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I don't know anything about the book The Outsider, by the way. Me neither. I it just it was, says like he's a lawyer and then things get supernatural. It has no relationship to The Outsiders. No, or the show Outsiders, which I hosted an after show for at WGN America. Fair enough. Uh, who It stars David Morse, who's incredible in Danamora. Correct. Yes. Uh, Friends is not leaving Netflix until 2019. This is just a Warner Brothers thing. We can, we can just... You know, it... Don't worry, guys. It's still going to be on Netflix. 
And, and it's also going to be on Warner Media and every channel I was just on say, cable, and every single channel. And ever. if you don't have cable, it's also o- available over the air on reruns. It's any, it's anywhere you look. Everywhere you look <laughs> is Friends. Yes. So you don't need to <laughs> worry. Friends is going nowhere. Yep. You will always have the opportunity to catch the one with whatever yes. storyline of that week. Uh, when we were on our honeymoon in Italy, uh, it rained really bad the one day, and we were kind of like stuck in our room, and the only show that was on was Friends, and it was amazing. Fantastic. Uh, the Rogue One prequel with Diego Luna yes. uh, is getting the Americans executive producer as the showrunner. Yes. I'm very excited about this. Me too. I was I was a little I, – I, we, we, we were on the show with Emma Fife. I'm still apprehensive a little bit on these Star Wars shows. Mm-hmm. But uh, having this guy – having Stephen Schiff, who rose the ranks – uh, to become an EP on the Americans. He worked with the show from season two all the way through the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, to have him be the showrunner, especially considering Diego Luna's character is a kind of a spy right. and works in the underworld and, and, and trading secrets for the rebellion and everything else. It after makes Narcos a lot Me- of sense. Yeah, after Narcos Mexico... Diego Luna, you're can, all you're all in on Diego. Oh my god, yeah, fan. He's just I, incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've been. A I'm fan. looking forward to these Star Star Wars shows because I never watched any of the Rebels. I never watched any of the animated right, right, stuff. Right. Obviously, I'm a Star Wars fan. I'm like, I know that I'm in a minority of people that I really enjoyed Solo. Um, for those diehard Star Wars fans, he's up on the clutch. It was a pretty fun movie. <laughs> the uh, this this gets me excited though because I was I I really there was a hole in my heart. That is the Americans. Yeah. And when the Americans left television, it was one of those. I like took a walk outside because I'm going to miss it. Like, I really be, love that show. There needs to be another. There needs to be another one. And I, I don't know what is going to fill that is. fill that spot. Yeah. But, uh, the Americans is was so unique yes. on the television in the television. Landscape. So I'm looking for. The, they're getting amazing talent for these Star Wars yes. shows, which isn't shocking. Yeah. Uh, which gets me excited. It gets yeah, me excited. And, that's fair. And it ties into the saga a little bit. So at least I'm not totally. Out there and don't know anything. Yeah, I, I, and I think of all the characters, I the prequel, obviously, spoiler alert if you haven't seen Rogue One yet. But, <laughs> or, or Star or Wars. Or Star Wars movies, but they all die. Yes. And so, you know, we know that. and we, this is a, <laughs> Everyone's dead, Dad! We know this is a prequel, yeah. so we're probably going to, maybe, maybe uh, K2SO shows up again, mm-hmm. I assume. Sure. Uh, everyone's favorite droid from that yeah. movie. Uh, but his he was the one character because he was the one that had all the know how right. at the beginning of that movie, and so we kind of we kind of meet him in the middle of his journey. Yeah. Well, he didn't realize it, but it was the end of his journey. Right. But but like you know, he was already in the thick of it. Yes. And that was a side of the Star Wars universe that we haven't really seen. Yeah. And I think that if done well, it Rogue could be one good. is my favorite if Star done, Wars movie. If done poorly, uh. the underworld stuff. I don't know if you ever watched it, but, but uh, Battlestar Galactica famously I didn't watch had Battlestar. had one episode that was kind of a uh, a, a, a uh, left turn into the underworld and the crime the crime uh, uh, underbelly of the Battlestar universe. <laughs> okay, and it was friggin' terrible. Was it the sewer and Demolition Man? Uh, yeah, it was just it was it it, it 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 felt like a backdoor pilot to another show. Got it. And it just didn't belong there at all. Like Baywatch and, Nights, and uh, and exactly like that. And so I think that if Rogue One showed us that we can go into that darker world yeah. and see people without the without the laser swords and and they uh, and and they can do some fun they can do some really cool stuff there. I agree. So I I think that it'd be interesting to see the spy world of the rebellion pre yeah. pre uh, uh, Luke Skywalker. Agreed. So All right, we uh, we are running low are, on time. We are real quick. Uh, my favorite news of the week. My well, no, not my it's favorite your... news of the week. My favorite thing in the business world, Bill Lawrence, the creator of Scrubs. Yeah. Uh, and who, the middle? No. No. Uh, Cougar Town. Cougar Town. Uh, he, uh, he just re-upped his deal at Warner Brothers Television. Uh-huh. But uh, he created one of, I think, the best multicam show in the last few years, mm-hmm. which was Undateable. And you and I both agree on that because I loved Undateable. And Love it. what was great about Undateable is that after the first couple seasons, they started doing live episodes. Yeah. Because they realized that the energy, the energy they're was... They're all live comedians. They're all comedians. They yeah. were all stand-ups for the yeah. most part. Uh, Ron Funches famously was in the show. Awesome. Love, love, love Back Funches. Back when he was a bit chubby. He was, a, he was bunches of Funches back yeah. then. It was before he, before he lost all the weight. Uh, Chris D'Elia and Brent Morin were the two mm-hmm. leads. 
and uh, and they uh, they were all they were all comics. They all were trained that way, and so their live shows were hilarious. Right. And then the last season, they went live every week. Yeah. For the whole thirteen or sixteen episodes or something, uh, I actually went to one of the one oh, of the live cool. live shows. Yeah. Uh, it was really funny. Awesome. And they would do it twice every night. They do a East Coast and a West Coast, mm -hmm. and they change stuff specifically. So like a guest star in one would not be the guest star in the gotcha. other, and they would like they would throw like the West Coast lines like they would they would throw them throw the cue cards out to try to screw up the actors kind yeah, of thing yeah, yeah. cuz it, it was all about the live element of it mm -hmm. it was really funny very groundbreaking i don't know if it's available on streaming anywhere i've never seen it i haven't seen it anywhere yeah. uh, nbc might have it in their the streaming archives. their their library somewhere quick but, lane to my archives but uh he's producing a new show supposedly not live at this point uh also starring brent morin mm -hmm. who is very funny yes uh he's playing a guy who's trying to prove to his family that he can hold a job and he takes a Takes Sounds a job, eerily familiar. And <laughs> takes a job at the most fashionable department store. Mm, maybe so I think, a Bergdorf Goodman. So I feel like the whole show is going to take place in like the three camera setup in a department store. I love it. Which I think is really funny. I hope that they get a bunch of comics involved. Yes. And make it make it kind <sighs> of a raucous time. Uh, because I feel like that's what worked so well for Undateable. Unfortunately, Undateable didn't find an audience ever, no. so it didn't last. It's only two, three seasons. Three seasons that were only like eight episodes apiece, right? Yeah, so they were not. They, they yeah. did not do that many episodes. Unfortunately, at all. yeah. But uh, it was very funny, and I, I'm glad that there's another good, potentially another good multicam sitcom out there. Agreed. He's also got other stuff in the works. He's doing a show based on a DC comic for CBS. Mm. He's got a show with Sarah Chalk that's like a dramedy. Uh, so he's doing a lot of stuff. But uh, but yeah. So and we'll end there because oh, end with. There is a lot of stuff on Netflix. On Netflix. Uh, and SNL did one of my favorite sketches of the year, and I'm thank thankfully you showed it to me. Yeah. It's a pre-tape a pre-tape commercial parody about all of the stuff in development at Netflix. And it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. But it strikes a chord. It does. It, it hits a chord. I, I watched it. We've been it talking about the bubble here. For when a while. is this bubble gonna burst? Yeah. Like there's so much content on Netflix. Sure. There's tons of content on television. Like there's a, what does the guy from FX say every year? Like there's over 500 scripted shows on cable. Yes. Like just on television That's in general. A ton. That's a ton. Yeah. It used to be four. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be four shows a night and, on three networks. And like it. That's 12 if you're counting at home total. It, yeah. Four times three. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. And, uh, and so now Netflix, Netflix has thousands of programs. It's absurd. Every show, like how you and I don't have a show on Netflix yet, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Either. Like I think I might have one in development that I just don't even know about. It's that. It's that. <laughs> It's a makeover show yeah. uh, where I just put people in, in, Hawaiian, in shirts. Hawaiian shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just don't I just don't understand. At some point it will burst. Yes. Netflix like they are they they are taking out billion dollar loans, yeah. it feels like, and to if cover it these costs. Doesn't burst. Then our eyeballs are gonna burst because of <laughs> through the, all the yeah. content. The real one that hit me was the old woman watching like what they call like the, the Mead project or whatever, and I was like, that's eh, me. The Kill Mead project, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, there's it. It plays to mm -hmm. one one lady who yeah. can't turn off her TV. Yeah, yeah. And like if you love comedians and cars getting coffee, you'll love Leslie Jones in a van. <laughs> Jones in a van getting batteries. batteries. Uh, yeah, it's just it, there's so much of it, and it unfortunately, and some filmmakers have started to talk about this too. It kind of. It waters it down to the point where the 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 barometer for what is good. Like right. we we've been in the peak TV world for some time. Ever mm -hmm. like the Sopranos, uh, into Mad Men, into Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like there's there's like excellent television, like better than the movies, all of that yes. stuff. But now we're getting into the glutton phase. Yeah, where. There's just You've already had two servings of Thanksgiving dinner, Thad. And now we Sit want a table. fourth. Yes. <laughs> it's like we're jumping ahead. Yeah. And at a certain point, it's like, yeah, I just watched eight hours of something. Was it good? I don't know. Right. But it was fine. I just had I just kind of ingested it for eight, eight to ten hours. So that's what happened with the Kaminsky method. I was just like, okay. Okay, I'm gonna watch this. Yeah. Like, here we go. It's only eight episodes of 30 minutes apiece. How bad could it be? Right. And, and it was like Good. And then you're like, did you see last year's Best Picture winner? No, I haven't had the time. Had it was an hour and a half. Right. Like, come on. Come on. Like, it, it, we've gotten to the point where we're just, we're, we're, we're seeing 
we're not seeing the forest for the trees, or we're seeing the trees, but not the yeah. forest. I can never figure out that metaphor properly, but there's just too much of it. 100%. And we don't know what to do. There needs because to be. You watch, I guarantee you watch, you, you've you watched 10 shows that I've never heard of, and vice, vice versa. versa. And our fans are constantly uh, tweeting us. We when have are you going to talk about she I'm sorry, I don't have time to watch she But, like, there, I mean, there's so many shows out there, and, like, 100%. I, I can't keep up with it. There's but just too much. At the same time, the shows that do get my attention are pretty damn good. There is still good television out there. Yeah. There's excellent television out there, There's but it's getting lost. I guarantee that 90% of the public doesn't know Escape at Danamora exists. Right. Ben and, Stiller is crushing it right now as the director of that series. For example, this this Innocent Man docuseries yeah. comes out next Friday. I didn't even know about it until no. I watched the trailer this yep. morning before we taped. Yep. Didn't even hadn't even heard that it existed. Yeah. And it's just like they're just throwing stuff up there 100%. with no marketing. And then if it doesn't overperform, then they're going to cancel it. Yeah. And it's just kind of it's very strange. It's a very strange business model. I don't understand it. I would like to compare it to like one hit wonder bands. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So like there the, are some the record industry. One like, hit wonders like that I will CDs. stand by. Yes. And then there's the there's the the rock stars that go on for right. a few. Like, OK, let's just compare it to Tommy Two Tone. Uh, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Slash Jenny. Slash Jenny. One of the greatest, if not the greatest one-hit wonder of all time, yeah. right? Then you have the bands like A Train, right? <laughs> that have like two good CDs and they tour and they're very good. Yeah. Hootie and the, the Blowfish just announced a, re- a reunion tour, by the awesome. way. Awesome. Great. I love Hootie, okay? And again, Hootie and the Blowfish. You got your one-hit wonders, yep. the shows that I'm like, I really like that one season. Now it's gone. Then you have like your three-season rock stars like, oh, dude, season two, great. Shows like A Glow yeah. or whatever. And then you have your Rolling Stones, your Beatles, shows like, for me, a Peaky Blinders yeah. or a House of Cards or a Ozark or a... Um, What's the one that we that we love that has like four seasons now uh, on Netflix? Uh, Narcos. Oh yeah, right. So you have those shows that are your rock stars. The one hit wonders get so buried yeah. that I don't know if I'm the only one that even knows they exist. Right. And unlike one hit wonders in the music industry, it takes twelve hours <laughs> to watch a one hit wonder. <laughs> yep. Like it it's just crazy. You're it's right. just crazy. You're I don't right. know. There's just too much, guys. There's too There's much. There's just too much. There's only two of us. We're only two human beings uh, who are ending the show yes. right now. Thank Sorry you. Sorry we didn't get to your Twitter questions. We just had a lot of news with the Glo- Golden Globes. Yes. But uh, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know who your predictions are yeah. for these awards. Agreed. Because I want to know we, we should do some uh, some Twitter polls. Find yeah. out uh, what your uh, what what your picks are for best drama, best comedy, and maybe the best I'll throw lead up, actors. I'll throw them up on my Twitter. Yes, the polls. Do that. Follow um, at Josh Makuga. You can only do four in the Twitter poll, so I'll get rid of the one that I think won't win. Won't win. win. Uh, which That's is tough. tough. That is tough. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. You, again, subscribe to the feed here, Collider Podcasts on YouTube, and you can subscribe to the Collider TV Talk feed wherever you get podcasts. Uh, you guys can see Collider Sports, Collider Live, Collider Movie Talk. I also have my own YouTube channel, The Josh McCuga Show, and The Afternoons with Josh and Ken, all places that you can ingest content. Talk about a lot. That Dad. is a lot. That is a lot of content. Mm-hmm. I don't have any content, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you just make the content. I just make the content. And if you follow me at Twitter on Twitter at Thad Williams, I'll put a poll up about I don't know which episode of Maisel I like the best. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like go to his go to his for the polls. I don't know. Uh, oh, that's good. But All go right. to the polls, guys. <laughs> go to the polls. Get don't your forget I voted to, sticker. Don't forget to vote. It's uh, it's December. We missed that. But exactly. Now the voting season happens for the awards, which is fun. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. That's TV Talk. Hashtag at Josh McCooker for Jeopardy. Hashtag at Collider TV Talk. We'll see you guys next week. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote.